So we might as well start with the plant that everybody asks the most about in the landscape. Welcome to HeartTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is all about pruning. Uh, this will probably be over uh, several videos. Uh, this is a landscape project in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's been going on for a couple of, a couple of seasons now. Uh, the plants, most of the plants went into ground. They were in very small containers. I try to buy things small. I like, I enjoy watching them grow. I enjoy manipulating them, like in the case of this uh, tree form, Hydrangea paniculata. Uh, so starting small uh, gives me that opportunity. And so, but now it's finally time to do some pruning uh, in this landscape. There's a lot of things that need uh, a little bit of control. Uh, and so I'm gonna be doing that over the course of, again, several videos. So let's get started with this Hydrangea paniculata. I got this from uh, Dr. Durr a uh, year uh, a little over a year, made a video on tree forming uh, a hydrangea, and I get, again, I get asked about this one all the time. Uh, it has, if we look down here at the bottom, uh, I've got a good pair of hand pruners, and I've got a good pair of garden shears here. I've got several other tools uh, that I use uh, as well. You can see all the suckering that's happening down here uh, at the bottom of this plant, and uh, that's one thing we'll look for in the landscape. This is not a grafted tree. It's on its own roots, okay? And we'll see some grafted trees, uh, grafted things coming up. But this one's on its own roots and it's just suckering um, from, from down at the bottom. Where it, when, A lot of times when you start cutting on something, especially you know on a tree, you'll see suckering start to happen at the bottom. You'll see that a lot on crepe myrtles. We'll talk more about crepe myrtles throughout these videos, although I don't have any uh, in this landscape. Uh, there are plenty to enjoy in my neighborhood without me planting one. So uh, anyway, these are, these are what we would call uh, root suckers or, um, you know, or just bottom suckers. I'm gonna just clean these up anytime I see them. They're just taking energy away from the plant and not really giving us anything in return. Uh, unlikely to flower down there. And so, okay, so we're cleaned up there. I had staked this originally, and then I had three distinct branches, which I had cut uh, at this height, okay? And I said in that video that each of them would produce three or four new shoots coming up, okay? At this point, uh, each of them, this one has produced four, okay? I think we can see that. There's one, two, three, four. One of them's heading back toward the middle, and I'm gonna take that off, okay? Uh, just right out of the gate. Uh, I know the future of that branch is going to be, it's gonna run through the middle of the plant and cross with another one and just rub. Um, not gonna give us anything in return. My second branch over here has three, just like I was looking for, and they're all going out from the plant. The other one over here has four, and one of them is kind of right in the middle of the tree, right there, you see it? See that one? So I'm just gonna come down here and cut it. You won't be able to see that all that well, but if you're looking for what I'm talking about, which is just, let's open up this middle just a bit. That's what I've done. And I'm just trying to not have branches in the future uh, crashing into one another. These are all gonna flower. Hydrangea paniculatas bloom on new growth. That's the one thing I know about them. So I'm gonna get flat one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, possibly nine potential flowers, exactly what I was going for. They'll flower about this height, and I'm gonna cut these down uh, after they flower down to about here. And so from, my, from where it had branched on the main stem, they came up about, uh, maybe that's about 18 inches, uh, 15 to 18 inches. These new three branches are gonna be 15 to 18 inches when I cut them. And then I'm gonna get three from them. You see how this is gonna work? I'm building the structure of this tree on my terms. Um, and you can do that on, a, on one of these hydrangea paniculatas. Paniculatas include limelight. Um, everybody's from, lots of people are familiar with limelight hydrangeas. One thing about this is I would prefer a little more spreading you know, on the top of this tree. I could come in here and put a bamboo stake out here and actually tie this out like that if I want to on all three of these um, and, and get, get a bit more spread going um, on the canopy of this tree. But I think I'm gonna do that on the next layer, okay? I, I'm not gonna do it on this layer. I'm gonna let this layer go up a little bit higher. I've got the shed here. I wanna try to get it over the shed at some point. So I'm gonna go up for a while. The next round though, I may cut and pull down this way. And all I have to do is pull down for a month or so. But there's the, there you go. There's the update on the hydrangea paniculata. I pruned two, two branches out of it. It was fertilized earlier in the season. After it flowers, 
basically going to deadhead them all at the same height. Um, and uh, next year they'll branch out three more, three more branches for each of these branches. We're on our way. I have lots of implements of destruction. I've got uh, several pairs of hand pruners uh, and pruning saw and garden shears. Uh, you know, keeping these tools sharp is important. Uh, we'll, we'll go over how I use some of these. And then I've got basically uh, you know, a long, a, a very long bypass set of bypass pruners, and these are extendable. These will wet, go way up and in, way up into branches. And I also have the gas hedge trimmer. We'll break this out at some point because there's some things that I really need to gain some control over. So if you're watching a series of videos, you'll see lots of different tools used. Uh, this is the cousin it tree right here, uh, otherwise known as Golden Falls Redbud. Uh, this tree is so fast growing. It's just absolutely amazing. Um, when I acquired it, it was already this height. Okay, so I want to buy one that's already this height because all the growth is coming to the ground. All of the growth is coming to the ground. I actually lifted this skirt on this or pruned it up from the, the ground uh, at the end of last season and uh, showed that uh, in a video and already gosh it's only it's the middle of may here and i have i don't know how long that is maybe 20 24 inches of growth already on the bottom of this tree and with the weight of the water that's in the branches it's pulling it back down again so i'm just going to go right around the bottom of it and uh and limit up i've got a black eyed susan on the other side over there that i don't want to cut in half that's kind of under it so i'll be careful when i get over to the other side but again all i'm doing is lifting it lifting it i'm lifting it skirt so to speak uh and trying to uh again i got a black eyed susan over here i'm trying not to cut off this thing grows so fast you guys will be amazed. It'll be right back down to the ground uh, very, very soon. Okay. And I managed to not cut uh, the Black Eyed Susan in half that's under there. Uh, there you go. I think I got most of those pretty even. Okay. And now we can see down at the bottom of this tree uh, what I was talking about where some of my trees are grafted. You see this little ball basically on the bottom here. Uh, that is a, that's a graft. It's actually grafted onto a different uh, Cersus or different red bud. Right. So why is it grafted? For whatever reason, um, this thing on its own roots uh, wasn't, isn't strong enough. And so they've decided that uh, putting it on the um, root stock of, a, uh, of another red bud is preferable. Of course, I've got English ivy has to pop up under everything, you know, when I'm, <laughs> I'll, I'll just definitely discover some weeds in some of this pruning. But anyway, I've got it limbed up. Um, there are some dead branches in here that, you know, I'll look for anytime I'm doing this type of pruning. This is just a branch that died during the winter time. For whatever reason, it didn't come back out. Uh, cleaning up any of those, um, those pieces out of it will increase some air movement in the middle of the, uh, middle of the plant. Look, I've lost a hole and I lost a branch that actually has the tag on it. But there you go, I'll put the tag on a, uh, on a different branch or just, or just put it inside or whatever. But um, there you go. I'm gonna look for a weeping tree like this is going to kill some interior branches. It's not getting any light, not, you know. Um, and so you're gonna lose some, um, not all, but some of your interior branches uh, every year. So I'm getting that cleaned up, lifting the skirt on it. Uh, and then I'm checking, make sure there's no growth coming below that graft. Any growth you see below that graft is a different tree. Uh, it's not this tree. So definitely want to get that cut off. If I had any, this graft looks perfect. One thing about the type of pruning that I just did on this red bud is I could have gone through here with these hand pruners and cut just above a leaf node and uh, really did kind of a, you know, a super accurate uh, job of it. This tree <laughs> is Again, a very vigorous, fast-growing uh, plant, and uh, that's why I went after it with the head shears. Keep in mind that you can get in here and be more accurate, and there are some plants that you'll see uh, coming up where I'll be a little bit more uh, uh, one branch at the time uh, to uh, keep a more of a natural look to it. I've got this abelia, uh, this uh, Miss Lemon abelia, and it looks great, but I'm in part shade here, and... Uh, this plant will grow fine, will grow fantastic in, 
in shade, in sun, wherever. But when it is in a little bit of shade, like this one is, by the, it's getting some direct sun, but by three in the afternoon, uh, it's got shade across it. It's stretching a bit. And so this is one of the quickest and easiest <laughs> pruning jobs I'll do out here. Uh, you can, and might be a good idea on these, if you take a branch like this that's popping up out of the plant, uh, if you'll cut it way down into the center of the plant like that, it, it will take longer for it to, uh, to, to come back up. So um, there is an advantage here to pruning these individually, uh, but just for the, uh, the, the speed of it, I'm gonna cut this. I am not cutting any more of this plant than just the pieces up here on the top that I wanna take off. I'm not gonna give my abelia a general shearing. Why is that? This blooms in the summer. We're not very far away from having flowers on it. And so if I give it a hardcore prune right now, uh, it's going to, I'm gonna lose a lot of flowers uh, for sure, literally within the next three weeks or so. I've got an abelia out in the front garden that's already flowering and bees are already on it every afternoon. And so again, not giving this a general pruning, just taking off the uh, longer branches. And I kind of want the plant to look, you know, I don't want it to look completely formal. It kind of has a formal look on its own without me. Some of this pruning timing is knowing what you have because th again, this is a summer flowering shrub. It's gonna bloom in a few weeks. If I get in here and just kind of generally prune it, I'm gonna lose flowers. I've got a hydrangea next to me with lots of buds on it. Don't wanna be pruning that right now uh, for sure. Uh, that hydrangea paniculata, it's a little late at this point. The first tree we sh I showed uh, to be pruning on any hydrangea, but we're gonna be pruning some azaleas in this little video series. They've already flowered. So anything that's already flowered, we can get after those hard. Anything that hasn't flowered, we're just gonna touch them up here and there. That's it. This is a variegated uh, abelia. Some of your variegated plants will have green sports on them, meaning that while branch will come out that won't be variegated, it'll be solid green. This one doesn't have any of that. I'm gonna have, obviously have some cleaning to do here at the end after, off camera. Uh, but uh, if you do get a green sport, you know, just a green branch coming out of it, take that off and try to get all the way down into the plant and cut that completely away. You're, think about this, um, that green sport has an ad, is, has an advantage over this variegated plant. Um, if you get a green branch on it, it's gonna be able to produce chlorophyll easier and faster, and it's gonna outpace and outgrow the variegated part of your plant. So if you see that on any variegated plant you have, get it out quick, um, because it will, uh, it will become green uh, very, very quickly, the whole plant. I know I'll get asked about this Japanese maple. Uh, this variety is called Tamukiyama, and uh, I trained it into this um, contorted shape that it's in. I've had this plant for a long, long time. It stays in a container so it can be moved about uh, in the garden and uh, it's been happy in this container for a long, long time. Uh, basically, I just, you know, what I showed you at the beginning of the video on that uh, hydrangea paniculata, it's just about putting a bamboo stake in a position and tying it to it and just leaving it there for some period of time. And, and you can produce these crazy shapes like this. Okay, the tree here, is a Tokyo Tower Kyananthus or Chinese fringe tree. We have a native fringe tree as well. It's a beautiful. Uh, Tokyo Tower was selected because it's very fastidious, meaning very upright, okay? There are a couple branches, a few branches coming out uh, uh, flat, you know, coming out this way that I ultimately will be taking off the tree. I don't, I don't wanna do that today. There's four branches going vertical up here at the top that will will definitely end up being the upper part of the tree. This branch, this branch, and some of this stuff will be coming off. I'm not gonna do it today because I just think the tree would look, you know, oddly, uh, oddly naked the rest of the season if I did that. But I think so, in, I think in future years, like maybe next season, I will cut this off. I'm going ahead, I am gonna go ahead and try to get some additional branching up here at the top. I'm gonna be a little more selective on this, come down to a leaf node. Uh, this, thing, this tree is already flowered, again, so uh, thinking through that, uh, this is an early flowering tree. I'm just gonna come down to a leaf node all roughly about the same height and uh, get some additional branching. So I'll have, if you're looking at this, I have four upright branches and about right here, each of those is gonna divide into about three to four more uh, next year. And then I will clean everything up down below that uh, actually, of course, this summer is when that growth will happen. Uh, okay, we're gonna come down to right about there. And so roughly, I've cut that all to 
a similar height. Uh, and again, all of this parts, all of these parts will be cleaned off of it next year. I do right here in the middle have another example of a branch that's just running right through the middle. You see that? And so I want to uh, cut that one, cut that one right back into there. And again, there's another one right there. So I'm looking for branches that I know in the future are just gonna pop you know, right through that hole from this branch on this side or pop right through this hole from this branch right here. Um, those just need to go ahead and go away. They're gonna cause problems in the future. I'll clean this up next year. Down here at the bottom, we're looking at lots of suckering. This one had a lower branch on it uh, when I first got it that I cut off and from where that branch is, uh, it's just trying to uh, grow over and over and over again. This is easy to clean up. Uh, you know, this is a once a year, once a year little pruning job down here. Uh, to clean that up. Again, this is another grafted tree. Everything down below the graft uh, looks fine. Uh, my buddy Jason Stevens grafts a lot of these uh, Tokyo Tower uh, Kyananthus. I'm sure he did this one as well. But overall, the tree's looking great. Uh, it'll get a different kind of haircut uh, next season, and I think it will be taking that fastidiate upright shape here over the next year. Here's another Hydrangea paniculata. This one's white wedding. And again, all of this new growth on it is where are going to be flowers in just a few weeks. So I don't want to be pruning on that. It, except for if you just had a crazy limb on it somewhere. If I had a limb that was coming out over here, people are always you know, asking those questions. When can I remove it? When can I remove it? If you have a crazy limb, you know, get rid of it uh, whenever you want to get rid of it. Uh, this is a Viburnum nudum, uh, a native shrub uh, here to my uh, left, and it's in full flower. I think I'm going to control start to control the height on it a bit after it finishes flowering, but that's just literally a matter of, of, of tip pruning uh, the top of it. So let's talk about pruners. Uh, this is your normal set of bypass pruners, you know, where the, where the blade passes by uh, just like that. That's why it's called a bypass pruner. This is an anvil pruner, and you probably have seen these in your life and wondered what the heck you use an anvil pruner for. This basically, the blade dead ends uh, flat onto a, you normally just kind of a flat, uh, a flat object. This one's uh, serrated for some reason. I actually don't know why that is, but, uh, anvil pruners are great for dead branches. Uh, it's actually for whatever reason, it's very difficult for your bypass pruners to cut through dead limbs that have completely dried out and it will dull them. Anvil pruners are perfect for that. And I'll get, I've got a butterfly bush here. It's got a dead limb. And this anvil pruner will just go right through it. It has no problem whatsoever uh, cutting through that dead, dead branch. And if I do that with my bypass pruners, I have to apply two, three times more effort. That's a small one, so it's not a great example. But trust me, if you get a big, a big dead, dried out branch, um, and that's what your anvil pruners are for. So if you're pruning dead things out of plants, get your anvil pruners. If you're, pr if you're pruning out live, uh, material that's got moisture in it, your bypass pruners uh, work best. Here's a screenplay holly, and this is what I'm talking about when I'm, we're talking about just a crazy limb down at the bottom of something. This limb's gonna run, you know, six feet out, you know, <laughs> left of the plant, and uh, it's not offering the uh, shrub anything, so I'll just go back uh, down right at the base of it, honestly, and just prune it off like that. Again, good sharp pair of uh, pruners. This plant doesn't need any other pruning than that, but just, again, if you have a crazy limb on something, take it off. Um, plant, 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 won't, plant won't hate you for it. So this monster behind me is a Carolina Midnight uh, Laura Petalum, and it just has stretched and stretched. It's not in quite as much sun as it would like to be in, so the branches are a little bit wispy because they're reaching for the light. And then we've gotten several uh, wind events. Um, you know, so it had some ice on it during the winter time, and it's bent it over uh, quite a bit. I try not to prune this plant down into a perfect little ball. I like this open natural habit of it, uh, but I've let it grow five feet longer, uh, honestly, than it needed to be up here at the top. So we've got to get in here and prune this. And I'm going to prune basically a branch at the time and just bring them back into the middle of the plant, uh, throw them out to the side as I go. I've got some azaleas under here that need some, uh, need some work. And we'll do that after, after I get this under control, uh, like everywhere in this landscape, uh, stepping on stepping on something when I'm, when I'm working now. Uh, but I'm just coming, I'm just taking a, taking a branch that's obviously too heavy, okay? And I'm coming back 
and I'm finding a place where it still has some growth on it back along this limb right here. You see this little side branch and I'm going just above it, just like that. You can see how much it lifted. It smacked the camera as it did, but it, you see how much it lifted uh, immediately, just taking that weight off of it. The rest of this branch, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just coming back to where I've got other growth on it and uh, cutting it cleanly. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna be able to lift, lift all of these branches just by taking some weight off the end, but I'm leaving them, you know, I'm leaving this thing where it's got this, you know, pieces that are longer than others. I'm not cutting it off uh, perfectly straight. Uh, and uh, sometimes this can take uh, a little while to, uh, to think through, but I'm basically just leaving a branch. I'm leaving a side branch uh, at the point where I'm cutting it. Just taking this bit of weight off of it to, you know, which allows it to lift itself back up. The bottom growth on it's not as wispy as the new growth was at the end of the season. Uh, that's all uh, I'm doing. Steph can get in here close and do this, do this branch. So you've got this branch with all this weight uh, on the side of it. I could come, I could cut it, I could cut it here, okay? And it would definitely lift itself up, but that one's still that long. So I wanna go past it uh, and come back uh, to right about there. See, I got a little side branch right there and it's going upward and not downward, boom, just taking that off just like that. I haven't really changed the form of the plant. It still has a loose open form. Here's another one. Again, if I cut it here, I've still got this long piece on it. I really haven't pruned any size out of it. I wanna go back a bit further than that, just above a branch that happens to be going up. <laughs> that's you know something you can identify on the stem. You know, I'm gonna cut it to a branch that's going upward and not a branch that's going uh, downward. Here's a big, you know, big weeping branch here. There's a some growth on it right there that's going up. I'm cutting it just like that. And so when we end this, uh, we should have the plant pulling itself back up, but not looking like a meatball. Sometimes during your uh, spring pruning, uh, you may come across a bird's nest that's actually actively being used, and there's one in this Laura Petalum. So I'm going to abandon the Laura Petalum pruning for now. Uh, I've, got, I've got most of this side uh, done on it. I've still got a few uh, you know, branches that are sticking out here or there that I'll, I wanna clean up some. I gotta get the rest of this height and the back side of this thing done, but there's a bird's nest here. Uh, and she's, uh, she or he is not very happy with me uh, this morning about working around there. Uh, I, can, I can hear her back here. Uh, screaming. So I'm going to abandon this one, come back to it in a, in a few weeks um, when they're done with that nest. I'm going to wrap this video up with this uh, Wygela. Lots more pruning to do. Make sure you're following along with the channel so you can uh, see the rest of it. And again, I'll talk through when I get to a plant why I'm cutting it, why I'm pruning it, why it's the right time of year, why it's not the right time of year if I'm standing next to something that's not the right time of year. This Wygela, I had um, these gold foliage plants like this one, uh, need a bit of a break during the day, meaning that uh, where this Wygela could stand out in the 15 hours of direct sun, this one with the gold foliage needs a break. I put it in too much shade last year, and it's been moved to this spot uh, because of that. And it was stretching. You can see all these long branches on it where it was just stretching out. It was just, uh, um, you know, it was gonna be 15 feet tall just trying to get sunlight. You can see since it's been moved over here, we got nice full growth coming from the center of it. It's all clean, it's got the gold color on it. Uh, it's looking great. Uh, these spot, these longer branches, uh, it's time to, uh, to get rid of those now. And again, I'll just go down to a leaf node. Uh, if Steph will bring the camera closer right here. What I mean by a leaf node is I can go anywhere along this branch and just cut above uh, one of these uh, leaves that are coming out. I wanna go lower than that, but I mean, I've got a lot to choose from right there and so that's where my growth will come from and you can't even see the cut i made you see this i've pruned this plant but can you tell i pruned it no you can't because it's covered up by the growth that's along the stem i'll do the same thing right there again can you see that that's a pruned off branch it doesn't look like it's been pruned at all does it 
um, because of where I pruned it. Same thing uh, on this one. Just gonna cut it right there. And you can't even see that I have pruned this plant. After a while, you get to where you just know, I can take the pruners and just kind of slide them in along the branch and right above a limb, boom, I'll take it off. And so you get pretty good at this after a few years of doing it. Um, and I think that's it. I got it back under, I got it back under control there. So beautiful. And now it's going to be hopefully much fuller than it was in the spot that it was in. Sometimes you put things in the wrong place. And if you see it stretching like that, it's telling you it's probably not getting enough light. So I put it in that spot. It's going to get another hour or two of direct sun than it had last year. So there you go. So uh, thanks for following along uh, with the channel again. Uh, lots more pruning to come and we'll get back on this lower pedalum at some point It actually does look better because I did this side of it uh, that, that I can see but the other side of it still needs still needs lots of work So thanks for watching